So next I'm going to be taking a look at the Cyberman and again let me just quickly remove the, the plate he stands on and this is your Cyberman. Now Cyberman is very odd. He, well not not odd but he doesn't stand up very well. He You have to bend his knees for him to stand up. It might help if I put his arms down to give him a bit more stability. So yeah. Uh, this is the Cyberman. This is obviously the Cyberman from uh, I've already forgotten the, the title of the series now. It's the title of the episode. It'll come to me. Uh, and that from from Neil Gaiman's story. Nightmare and Silver, that's the one. Uh, and any subsequent stories, I think. And I haven't seen into the future. If you're looking back at this from like a couple of years' time and like, oh yeah, they changed then to this and whatever. Or the show went off air. Something like that. I don't know what's going to happen. Um... Let's take a quick look at articulation. The head is interesting. It's I'm not quite sure what the the joint is, whether it's the ball joint or what, but he seems to be able to rock his head backwards and forwards very slightly and turn it from side to side, so it might be like a, a very stiff ball joint. Uh, to give him a bit of flexibility. He has a ball jointed elbow but obviously the the armor the shoulder armor prevents any major arm movements to the side oh you can still do a 360 uh, again the elbow articulation is hindered by the the, the, the sort of padding on the armor um, funnily enough the Cyberman seems to be able to move his arm is a uh, elbow further backwards than looks comfortable I think this is more so available on the right arm yeah if you if you look like that in real life you would have quite a severe arm break um, and again just as that there's no articulation on the wrist there's n neither is there any the waist you can't swivel him uh, but there is ball jointed legs just like on the 5 inch Cyberman so you can go out to the side or up and backwards and the light circle the knee will bend and there is no articulation on the feet so probably because he's quite unstable as he is so it's just a brief overlook at the articulation so now we'll uh, look at the the detail on the figure, and this is where the Cyberman really impresses me. If we start off with the head, you can clearly see it captures the, the look of the Nightmare and Silver Cybin men really well. We've got the teardrop eye. The right eye, I don't know if it's just on mine, seems a little like uh, misshapen. Like you can see that one's a circle with a line coming out. That one just seems to be a big splodge. I don't know if that's just on mine, but. It, it it is a little annoying, but nothing too serious. The handlebars are very nice. You've got you can see on the the joiny bit in the middle. You've got the lines and the detail. The corner pieces are lined. Um, the ears, quite a lot of detail on the ears and the the pads. I've got lines to signify something. <laughs> you can see I've done this reviewing stuff before, not for a long time. Uh, the main body is just fantastic. If we start off with the chest, you can see in there that the sort of reactor arc type thing from a Iron Man looking thing. It looks like a sort of fan. It's got like swirls coming out of it. It's fantastic. It's covered in lines and little tiny details. And the arm is absolutely fantastic. You've got lines here. You look under here. You got lines on the joins. And then when we look on his back and We've got these like shoulder pads that, that like, there's this main bit like goes around and ends at these shoulder pads, and then we have this amazing looking robotic spine that traverses down the, the well the spine of the side mat, and that just looks absolutely fantastic. And that's really nicely detailed. You've got all this bit in here is really nicely done, and the, the armor on the uh, the arse, if you will, which sticks out quite considerably. Cyberman has an ass. <laughs> uh, 
Um, the padding on the front is all well and nice. And then, obviously, the arms and the armor on the arms has been done all really nicely, all really good. Even down to the joints on the jo on the uh, well, just the joints really have been given like lines to signify wiring and stuff. Yeah, and the hands are all covered in lines and wires and all really awesome cool stuff that makes it look fantastic and then you've got all this detailing on the legs and the boots are a little bit odd but still really nice there's tons of detail on this thing and I absolutely, I absolutely adore this figure for the amount of detail that goes into it and uh, yeah it's just brilliant and similarly to the Doctor figure, he comes with this plate with the Doctor Who logo on. So you can just, again, he has like two holes in the feet to fit the nodule. So again, you can place him on that, make him more stable, have him in all kinds of poses, have him terrorising the Doctor. They could be discoing together, anything really, anything you want. Uh, that's him next to the Doctor. They're very similar size. And then... As with the Doctor figure, I have a 5-inch Sideman as well. I'll just put them back there. So you can see, again, the difference between the two. Pretty much half size, really. Which is, that's what, 3.75 inches. It's pretty much half the size. Um, yeah, I just can't get over how like small they are. I've never had like 3.75-inch figures before. I don't have any of the Star Wars or Iron Man figures or anything like that. So these are the first. And, uh, yeah. So that's it for the Sideman, and join me in the next part of the review where I'll be quickly taking a look at the Dalek.